Today, I wanted to discuss a somewhat intriguing proposition in regards to black holes. Specifically, black holes that can maybe get stuck inside stars and not destroy them right away, but actually physically reside in them for potentially millions or even billions of years because of one important feature. We're talking about super tiny black holes that just do not have enough mass or enough pull, I guess, to destroy a lot of stuff quickly. And there is a really interesting paper that came out very recently proposing the idea of what's known as clocking stars. Stars that have black holes hiding inside of them can directly solve a lot of major mysteries, including the mystery of the elusive dark matter. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss this new study in more detail, talk about what's being proposed and why it's sort of important, and I guess more specifically, talk about if there is any evidence. Because it turns out that there might be. There might be stars out there that actually contain these objects on the inside. Well, the first, I briefly wanted to discuss one of the fundamental problems here that nobody can solve just yet. The problem of the dark matter phenomenon, which I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with. And the thing is, one of the potential solutions to this invisible matter that seems to pull on galaxies and create a lot more mass than what we can see has been proposed to be tiny black holes, or so-called primordial black holes. In this case, we're representing black holes that are not formed from supernova, they're not found in the middle of galaxies, and are generally extremely difficult to see, but potentially existed since the beginning of the universe because they were basically formed from a lot of different overdensities. Or in a nutshell, in the early universe, because there was a lot of matter interacting and creating different chunks here and there, there might have been some overdensities that caused a lot of matter to suddenly collapse into extremely dense objects, basically forming these somewhat tiny black holes. Black holes that are not as massive as typical stars, but instead have mass of maybe an asteroid, maybe a planet, or something in between. And this concept is not beyond modern physics, as a matter of fact, quite a lot of physicists do think they possibly exist. It's just there's one problem. We've never seen them and there's been no evidence whatsoever. But there is a reason why. These things would be minuscule in size. Some of them would actually even be smaller than a typical atom. And the only way to detect them is through gravitational lensing. Basically, when a black hole passes in front of some distant stars. But for these tiny black holes, even gravitational lensing would be minuscule and practically undetectable. So at the moment, there's just no way to find any of them anywhere, even if they're right here in the Milky Way. A few years ago, there was even a proposition that maybe one of these black holes could explain the effects from the mysterious and still undetected Planet 9. If that black hole is real and if it's approximately 6 to maybe 10 masses of planet Earth, it would actually be size of a typical orange. I mean, like this big. And so this whole concept of primordial black holes is super fascinating and could potentially solve so many mysteries in modern physics. And you can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. And so if there are a lot of these black holes out there, they can definitely explain the mysterious dark matter effects and can one day even be practical enough for us to use as maybe some kind of a black hole reactor. Once again, video in the description. But if there are so many of them out there, we expect at least some of them to maybe combine with stars and maybe even planets. But the question here is, what would happen to a planet and more specifically a star if one of these black holes ended up on the inside? And interestingly, because these are such small objects, they surprisingly would not really do much at first. They are minuscule in size and there is a lot of space in between atoms, so in some sense these black holes would be traveling in this interatomic space, not interacting and not absorbing anything unless their mass was large enough. And so, for example, if one of these black holes was only a mass of an asteroid, it would survive inside these stars for billions and billions of years. Nobody would even notice the difference. Here, its diameter would be similar to a hydrogen atom, and so it would have to collide with another atom for this atom to be absorbed. But these absorption rates would be so minuscule that even after a billion years, it would only gain a little bit of mass, increasing in size just a tiny bit. And so by the time the star transforms into something different, this black hole is still going to be super tiny and is unlikely to do anything. But some black holes could be more massive. For example, mass of planet Earth. Or even a mass of a dwarf planet like, for example, Pluto. Now these black holes would be a little bit bigger and would be able to absorb a lot more stuff much quicker. Here they would start growing much, much faster 
and potentially transform the star in just a few hundred million years. So basically before the star changes dramatically, becoming a red giant. And so if during the initial star formation, at least one of these Earth mass black holes ends up very close to a potential star, it will most likely fall into the center, stay in the center of the star for millions and millions of years, and will eventually start to transform it from the inside. And at this point we're going to start seeing a bit of a difference. Mostly because somewhere in the center of the star, this black hole is going to start forming something very similar to an accretion disk, just much much smaller. With this disk forming extremely hot emissions, much hotter than anything else the star itself can produce. And so once the black hole becomes massive enough, it's going to produce so much power that it's going to start affecting the rest of the star, almost acting like a kind of a mixer, shuffling everything on the inside and churning everything around, even expanding the star just a little bit. And it's really at this point that this is no longer really a star, it's not powered by hydrogen fusion at all, it's physically powered by the black hole in the middle. All of the energy produced here is the result of the accretion disk in the center and not fusion of hydrogen, helium or anything else. And this is where the scientist proposes to be a kind of a new object, a Hawking object, named after Stephen Hawking. But because it would be so so hot on the inside, it would have to cool off somehow. And here the scientists propose that it's probably going to be doing this by basically growing larger and forming a red giant much much sooner than it should be forming. But also because there is no fusion on the inside, it would be just a little bit colder than similar stars we've seen before. And this is of course where the HR diagram comes into play. The diagram that shows us the overall distribution of main sequence stars based on their overall luminosity, their magnitude and most importantly their color, as well as their temperature. And in this case, most stars out there fall somewhere on this diagram, which allows the scientists to then calculate everything from their mass to their age to a lot of other properties, including what's happening on the inside. But sometimes scientists discover stars that don't really fit very nicely on the diagram. Some of them are known as blue stragglers, some of them are known as yellow stragglers, and the word stragglers in this case just means that they have something that doesn't really add up, usually temperature. But for this study, the scientists focused on so-called red stragglers, giant red stars that seem to be a little bit off in terms of temperature. And according to the researchers behind this study, currently the Gaia telescope identified approximately 500 such stars that don't seem to fit with other stars. In other words, they have temperatures that cannot be just simply explained by looking at the graph. And what they're sort of implying is that we might want to take a look at this a little bit more closely because maybe these actually are these Hawking stars. Stars filled with primordial black holes that made them just a little bit cooler and stars that are not powered by fusion but are powered by black hole accretion. Honestly, a super cool proposition and is potentially worth investigating just because it would allow us to finally confirm the existence of these black holes but most importantly explain so many other mysteries with the biggest one being dark matter. But obviously the temperature differences would be explainable in some other ways. Are there any other detections we can use to see if there's basically a black hole inside a star? And here the scientists do propose one important method you can learn about in the description. It's known as asteroseismology. A method that we'll learn about by listening to earthquakes on planet Earth and then applying the same to the sun where we can physically sense the vibrations by looking at the changes in the solar luminosity. So basically we're talking about starquakes. By measuring starquakes on those distant stars, and there's a way to do that, you can learn more about this somewhere right there, it becomes possible to hear certain vibrations that cannot be produced by anything except for a tiny black hole in the middle. In other words, because Hawking stars would have a lot of activity inside of them and not just on the top layers, which is usually what we detect from a normal red giant, there will be very specific frequencies detected from these stars that would not be explainable otherwise. Implying of course that there is a black hole inside creating these unusual vibrations. And so hopefully astroseismology uh, experts will be able to look at those 500 stars sometimes in the future and maybe discover something in the process. At this point this is a really exciting opportunity to potentially prove the existence of primordial black holes once and for all. But then there is another question that they actually tackle in the paper and provide a bit of an answer. So what about our sun? Is there any chance there is a black hole hiding here as well? And what would happen if there is one? Well this is actually something that even Stephen Hawking himself proposed back in the days. And in this case 
it's quite possible for the Sun to contain something that's maybe one millionth the mass of the Sun. And if such a black hole is inside the Sun, it would actually cause the Sun to start transitioning in the next hundred million years, which would expand our Sun pretty quickly, raising its overall luminosity to quite dramatic levels, and then keeping it that way for several billion years, but also eventually forming a red straggler once again, with all of this ending in some kind of a subsolar mass black hole. In other words, there is maybe a slight chance that there is a black hole in the middle of the Sun as well, we're just not able to see it yet, and it's possibly not massive enough to create any major changes on the surface. And so these are some really intriguing propositions and may potentially lead to some incredible discoveries, assuming this is correct. But if after looking at these stars, nothing like this is discovered, then it's actually quite possible that primordial black holes do not exist, because by itself this paper does provide a lot of theory to explain how we could find them inside stars. And some should actually end up inside stars based on previous propositions. So yeah, hopefully someone gets on that really quick, and hopefully we get some results about this in the next few years, which I'm definitely going to be following up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, check out previous videos in the description below, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.